I just wanted to make a part two because yesterday or the day before's video where I was talking about you know the time uh, the time the knowledge consistency fitness diet and nutrition that's nothing really to do with actual bricklaying but it's the, so much more important than the bricklaying itself because if you really want to get you know plenty done and just be consistent and you need that, to have that under your belt to be able to get plenty done each day and you know not feel absolutely fucked by the end of the day and then the next day you can't do as much there's a few other things that to to get plenty of work done and to, to be consistent um in getting plenty done and <clears throat> the first one i'd say is building trust on on a job you need to turn up and um, building trust is like Turning up on time, always turning up, um, being reliable builds trust, uh, and it and it help it makes other you know like site agents and foremans and you know we work for the ground workers there so you try to make sure you're consistent in turning up um, and you build trust and they will tend to look after you better if you're always consistent in turning up. Uh, it's the same with any job really. If you're not um, turning up on time and you keep having time off and you know, you don't build trust and people start to shunt you off a bit more and they're not bothered about you. Whereas if you're turning up, you're getting on with it, you, you, you're communicating well. It will benefit you in the long run. If you're on site for a year, then you wanna you wanna build some trust. Um, you know, I, I, I compare brick laying to driving quite a lot to myself. I don't really say it much, but it's like <clears throat> when you start off a job, if you're driving to a job, you don't know the way. So you sort of you don't rush there because you don't know the way. So you 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 every day you just keep going backwards and forwards, you start to learn the routes, you know, you take your time and, and it's the same with brick laying. If you're plodding along and getting to know the routes. You don't need a sat nav anymore. You, you, you just know the way. And it's the same with um, each job you go to it. Things are different. And, and, and it just helps uh, if you just take your time, you know, driving it, so to speak. Uh, and then once you get the hang of that site, driving there backwards and forwards, you can just plod along there and back every day, no stress. Whereas if you're rushing around at the beginning, you're going the wrong way and you know, you're know late and it's a little bit like that, I suppose. But anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is technique. Technique in Brick Lane is um, very up there with how much you're going to get done. Everyone has slightly different techniques to each other and there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever if you're happy with the amount you're getting done the way you do it then crack on i've always been one of these people that try to minimize movement to get the most amount done i can and that's why i use what I, the technique that i use i've got a saying that the more you play the less you lay an old boy said it to me once a long long time ago he was he was he was a long bed spreader but he didn't V it out, he didn't fuck about of it. And uh, it was just on the wall, three, four or five bricks down uh, long, and then just bricks on the wall, on the wall, on the wall. And he was, you watched him and he wasn't fast, but he was consistently plodding along and he got some serious amounts of brick stands. And he was an old boy. So there's, think of it in your head. It's, it's common sense, really. The more you play, the less you lay. And the more you play with the mud, the muck, the mortar, whatever you want to call it, the less you're going to... If you're playing with that and I'm, I've just put it muck on the wall and I'm going to pick my brick up and you're still fucking about spreading it about, playing with it, then I might lay two bricks by the time you've fucked about playing with the muck. Um, and... It's over a period of a, of a month, over a year, that, that the money side of things is going to be dramatically different. Uh, so technique, whether you pick and dip or you're spreading muck on the wall, don't fuck about of it. If you look at a brick as the same way as you do a trowel, 
<clears throat> where you've got a flat side to a brick and you've got a flat side to a trowel. Once you learn how to manipulate the muck with the brick rather than manipulate it with the trowel, so to speak, it's so much fucking faster and easier. It is. It's so much easier. When you put a muck on the wall and on a hot sunny day and you start spreading it about, veeing it out and all sorts, one veeing it out um, creates it to be a lot thinner on the muck bed, um, which as the muck is thinner, it tends to dry out dramatically faster. Whereas if you just put it on the wall and you know how to put a brick in so that not a lot comes out the back and the rest comes out the front, it will squeeze down a lot easier so it's less ag on your wrist, it's less ag on your time. So technique is a real big thing to make sure you're getting plenty done being consistent. The other thing is timing between you and your gang. You're only as good as your weakest link. Us brickies are nothing without our hog carriers. And if the hog carriers aren't doing well, then it's our own faults for not, you know, teaching them right, whatever. Um, and timing with muck, as any bricklayer will tell you, is so important. If your hog carrier lobs out a load of muck and you're doing some fiddly work or something, he disappears to do a whole tub and you're doing fiddly work, it's gonna come over and you're still gonna have muck left from the other tub. You've probably still got muck left in the other tub and it's just sitting there going off, which means more water, more time for your hog carrier knocking up muck. Depending on what you're doing, depending on how many of you there are, depending on uh, the weather. Timing is crucial to be flowing well. The amount of wool that you take on if you're a single bricklayer or if you're free, you need to know, you know, I like building corners with profiles when I'm on my own especially because I can have three or four boards in one spot working it um, and then once I get about halfway up, they can take two boards away and I'm working off two boards on a hot day. It works really well. People think it's stupid, but you know, on a hot day like today, it really does work well. There's three of you, and the thing is as well, if you've got two profiles up and you've got a long flank to do and you're on your own, you need 15 boards maybe. Uh, and you can imagine a, a couple of a bucket on each board and they're blistering heat it's pretty stupid to take take on that amount of work in one go. You want to be building corners with your profiles or maybe little a little section where you've got a movement joint and a corner and it works really well. So yeah, timing is very crucial uh, in doing well at work. You know, sometimes you can't help the forklifts not busy the busy the forklifts busy or whatever, you can't help that, you know, it is what it is sometimes. But having, which is what I'm going on to next, the right setup is another crucial part in doing well in bricklaying. When I say setup, I mean <clears throat> water, right? I'm going to start with water. Depending on where you are on site, you need fucking water. I, the, we always have a. <sighs> Most sites I've been on, I always have my own water cube. Um, I haven't had one on this site I'm on now because we're like the only gang there, bar one every now and then. And we and the site, the the groundwork is have big um, drums to fill up with water. Usually we get and put next a drum of water put next to us, and we have a drum of water put next to the mixer, and we're all good. But when I'm on a big site, when I'm doing supers, <clears throat> and you've got a few gangs on site, I always have a cube. I mean, you can pick them up for 50 quid to 150 quid. You've got a water cube next to your plot, and there's nothing worse. Your hog carrier starting to run out of water, and he can't be bothered because it's halfway through the day, and he's got to walk miles with a bucket of water. I don't fucking blame him, to be honest. I wouldn't want to do it. Um, you know, and this is the other thing as well. People can't get hog carriers. Um, and I'll tell you why they can't. Um, because I'm a one-on-one -on -one at the minute because Amy's been a bit ill. Tyler's been off. 
George wasn't in today because I didn't need him in. Um, but Tom and me was doing our thing. Um, and it and it works well. A one on one works well. So when you've got a price worker, you've got two price workers, two experienced quick price workers. I think that hog carrying is a hard graft job, especially looking after two good bricklayers. Um, and I, I am very happy to have one person loading out in front, plodding along at a nice happy speed and having one look after me with Amy or whatever, I'm happy with that because the money we cover is plenty. Um, and it and it and it gives them to the two that are looking after us a easier life um, and they want to be there because they're not being drummed into the ground every day and, and it's relentless. It is relentless, especially in footings, it is relentless. George is new to the game. Fitness is a bit lacking at the minute. Tom's pretty good now. It works all right. So yeah, set up. Profiles. If you're on supers, profiles. They are faster, more accurate, more precise. You know, you can get your laser level put round on them. You can great gauge down of where you go. Um, it doesn't change the quality of work. If anything, it makes the quality better. I love building corners. I've been loving building corners um, in the footings. It's, you know, I ain't got to lump around loads of fucking profiles and, and gadgets and blah, blah, blah. It's been nice, it has. But if I build a super, I don't build corners. Maybe on the block work. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so profiles, without a shadow of a doubt. And you know, you've got your blakes, you've got your, um, you've got your aluminium box section. Now they are the two main ones you want. Uh, I love blakes because they're freestanding and you can point up as you go. I love them because of that. I love aluminiums when I use BTs because there's a few things that you can do with them that you can't do with Blake's a lot faster. And I like to butt up against an aluminium, but that's why you've, you've got the Fitzbrick line block now for the Blake's and uh, it works exactly the same. So, you know, aluminium's lighter. I like it because of that. Aluminiums tend to be easier because Anyone who uses Blake's knows, depending on scaffolding, it can be a bit of a pain in the arse sometimes, putting them up, can be. Uh, whereas aluminium, you never really have that problem ever. So yeah, profiles. And there is a there is a, a skill to using profiles. They are very finicky sometimes, if you don't know how to do it. Something you have to stick with. I know that there's a lot of corner builders out there who struggle to use them. Um, it doesn't mean any worse about it it's just some people when they can't do something like that they throw it out the window and get back to the usual way the way some people are i understand that but it doesn't mean that a profile user is a worse bricklayer than a corner builder it just means that they've understood how to use a profile and they understand the benefits from it the other thing is something that I brought about in, I'd say that I brought it around about four years ago on video and it's kicked off. Us English bricklayers have always used blocks, maybe bricks, sometimes two blocks on the floor, sometimes four blocks on the floor, sometimes six. Now, six is a nice height, but the amount of blocks you have to use to do it and the amount of time consuming it is for your laborer, is stupid, um, especially I've got 600 stands and I've had them for over four years, five years now. And I've, I've, I've got 15 of them because where I had a big gang, I knew that 15 was a good size, a good amount of to have to hit a, to hit a long flank and return the corners. So that's why I have 15 stands and 15 boards. I try to hit small sections as I can really movement joint to movement joint corner corner run in the middle depending on the gang size and the speed of the gang depends on how big of a long run you can take really but yeah stands and boards shadow of a doubt 
if you haven't got any, they are an investment, an investment that will make you more money. Your, your hog carrier isn't loading out loads of blocks and putting loads of blocks back. You can carry six stands at a time, six boards at a time. It's a quick movement from one area to the next. I used to have a big box that I made up <clears throat> for taking the stands, boards, uh, and profiles in. And the forklift driver used to just lift it up, move it over, and that's all our tools moved in one go. Because transitioning in from one plot to another is also an art that it can, <laughs> It can take forever, or you can do it in one swift movement. Once you get the hang of that, you'll be away. Just to recap, you, you want to be um, building trust and turning up and, and getting on with it. Your technique is important. It's so important. No, the more you play, the less you lay. Just remember that in your head. Every time you're playing with your muck, you're not laying them. You're laying with your muck. Um, your setup, so important. Putting a bit of money Spending money sometimes makes money in the long run. And, it, and I, I can assure you that getting stands and boards, best thing I ever done. Um, minus 600 high. I don't really like the ones that are being made at the minute um, for brickies. Uh, I don't mind the small ones, they're all right. For the footings, I've got some for the footings, which I got from SB Tools, so thanks for sending me them out. I do actually like the small ones for the footings, but the taller ones, <coughs> for the footings aren't good because they're very skinny. They're not very wide like my ones. Mine are plasterboard stands, the ones I use. The skinny ones, especially for footings, they're a no-go. <laughs> At times I fell over, I was getting fucked right off. <laughs> so yeah, stands and boards must. Uh, people say, oh, why would you buy them when you can quickly cut up some wood and chuck it? That wood, fuck that. It just sucks the life out of your muck. If, you, if you're knocking up muck, you're not fucking laying them are you if your hottie's knocking them up he's getting tired for no reason when you can have some i mean granted you have to have water plenty of it because you have to clean your boards every day 10 minutes finish 10 minutes uh get your hog carrier to 10 minutes early just to finish up and tidy the boards up it it, it makes good practice because your hog carry is more concerned about putting too much muck out um, and there's much less waste to clean up in the mornings. Um, you come up and it's clean. You don't come up there and you've got loads of rock hard boards and they're banging them out all over the fucking floor um, and making a right fucking two and eight of the states. States, state, place. Two and eight of the place. Spit out. So yeah, boards, stands, profiles. Do not think that you can make as much laying corners as you can profiles. Look, I hope this video has helped. There is an art to a lot of things in bricklaying that all add up to one thing and, and, and getting the hang of everything takes a long time that I am even still trying to perfect myself and I've been doing it for 19 years. So each day, <laughs> is a day to learn and that is what makes you want to get up in the morning so take i hope that take this all on board come back to it if you need a little refresher i hope it helps i really do um, and get earning some money until the next one